Well, praise God. What a joy it is to see all of your smiling faces in the house of the Lord. Amen. I'll tell you what, as I often start the service from time to time, I'd rather be right here than in the best hospital in South Georgia. Amen? Amen. And I'd certainly rather be here than in the jailhouse. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, we got a beautiful card here from uh, Steve and Maureen Lane thanking you for the beautiful plant that was sent uh, uh, in... Um, memory of uh, Steve's brother, and we appreciate that fine card. We sure do. Real quickly, uh, you'll notice to my left, your right, we're going to do a food box for a family uh, for Christmas. So if you've got some imperishable canned goods and uh, stuff you'd like to bring to donate, uh, I'll probably move that out of the sanctuary, but I wanted everybody to have the opportunity to see it. And uh, I like them little red trucks, as you can see. I used to have one whenever I was a young fella, and I wished I had it back. <laughs> but uh, I, I like them little red trucks, so I decorated that thing with a little red truck. Uh, so remember that, and uh, if you can, bring us some uh, imperishable food. I, in fact, I think Brother Macmillan said if we all had a fork, we might get to eat before we left today. <laughs> and so uh, that would be all right too, Brother Jake. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and Steve will uh, lead us with a choir opener, and uh, we'll get right into worshiping God, okay? And by the way, we're glad to have our guest piano player today. Amen? Amen. I'll tell you what. Wait till, afterwards. Wait till afterwards? All right. Well, let's pray. Father, we love you so much. And thank you for this opportunity you give us to worship. We're so grateful for the beauty of this time of year. My goodness, it seems like uh, we ought to be having cold weather. But we're living in a part of the country where we might start with winter and end up with summer before the day is out. So Lord, we just thank you for the beauty of the weather and for all of life itself. And we praise you for the birth of our Savior. We celebrate Jesus, not only this time of year, but every day of the year. Thank you for being our loving Savior. Bless this service now in Jesus' name. Amen.
Okay, if you will, take your hand on turn to page 88. Amen. At this time, we certainly want to pause to remember those that need a touch from the Master's hand. Amen? Amen. Uh, before we pray, let me just give you an announcement that I feel like is very important. On Sunday morning, the 19th of December, we will have our Christmas time together. Bring a covered dish with food in it. Amen. Amen. And uh, we'll enjoy a time of food and fellowship and uh, just enjoy celebrating Christmas together as a church. Amen? Amen. And uh, so we look forward to that. Uh, Barry said you could bring chicken and dumplings, and he could eat that any time. And, uh, of course, me and John like fried chicken. And uh, I'm looking way back there, and I see Annette. Uh, she makes the best sweet potato souffle. Uh, oh. Oh. Well, you can make us one before you leave, and we'll put it in the oven. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. Amen. Is there another man back in the choir that can do it? Okay. All right. Well, let's remember that announcement. Uh, there are so many people that need a touch from the Master's hand, uh, so many people who are sick. Uh, let's remember those on our prayer list, and I know you may have someone on your heart. Miss Carolyn, Miss Carolyn says, remember me, okay? Uh, okay. All right, let's remember Michael as he continues to deal with heart issues, okay? <laughs> Anybody else? Right. Anybody else? Continue to remember Gwen. She's having problems, but she's here today, thank God. Amen. My sister-in-law, Dot. Okay. Uh, Angela Nichols family. Okay. And I'm trying to remember anybody else. 
Okay. Praise. Praise. Always good to give Lord praise. Amen. Amen. Do you remember Emily? She had her surgery. Okay. Did she do well? Uh, I don't know. All right. Let's continue to pray for Emily. Anyone else? Brother Danny. Yes. Um, my one of my parents, her um, mother, OD'd the other day. So oh, I think she's okay, but I haven't heard too much okay. about. Y'all remember her, and I do have a pray. All right. Miss Roberta, the neighbor, Kimberly and Stephen's neighbor. They took her off the vent, and she was responding. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Answer prayer. Anybody else? Remember me. Miss Brenda. Okay. Anybody else? Remember my ginger. Remember ginger. My boy's eight years old. Bentley. Bentley. He's going to Atlanta tomorrow. She'll be on vacation. Oh, goodness. Eight years old. Mm. Bentley. Bentley, eight years old. I think he may have leukemia. Let's pray for that child, okay? And let's remember ginger, as you yeah, mentioned. She had a wreck and totaled out two vehicles. Oh, she didn't get hurt bad. She just bruised up. Well, let's remember her in our prayers. Let's remember the other beating to verse two. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Roger, if you will, lead us to the throne of grace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I'm I'm not worthy to even approach you, Lord, because I'm not where I need to be in my life. But Almighty God, through you, Almighty God, I'm working on it. And Lord, you've heard the concerns of everyone else here today, Lord. Their needs as well as their wishes, Almighty God. The heart desires. And I ask, Lord, that you place all of those needs upon your throne. Pour out your mercy and grace upon them, Lord. And give them the healing, Almighty God, they need if they need healing. Give them the peace, Almighty God, they need if they're needing peace. And Lord, give us all the vision of what's to come. But Lord, continue to bless this service today. Bless our pastor. Almighty God, continue to let him shepherd us through our times. And Lord, continue to lead us and guide us as always, Almighty God, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay, for our offertory, if you will, take the hymn and turn to page 96. We'll let us all stand.
Thank you so much. I tell you what, we appreciate you so much. Uh, didn't she do a good job? Praise God. Amen. Uh, our dear brother Mark is going to come and uh, share a song with us. And while he's preparing, uh, go ahead and take your Bibles and turn to Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Uh, I just want to say real quickly that we certainly appreciate everybody that works so hard to beautify our church and get it ready for Christmas. Amen. Amen. Everybody, you know who you are. And uh, we had others that wanted to help, but had other things going on. But thank you so much for uh, beautifying our church and making it beautiful for Christmas time. Now, now, let me ask you before we have Mark to come. We're at that season where it can either be too hot or too cold. Is everybody comfortable? Okay. All right. Mark, come on. Bless us, brother. I can't. 
to see that old load of guilt that I carry. It's all gone. Praise God, I'm free. Looking for that bright tomorrow where no tears shall dim the eyes. Oh, what a difference since Jesus passed by. you glory to God glory to God <laughs> but I'll make a Baptist shout right there you hear me <laughs> amen amen mm. good gracious life uh. so we can have hear some more of that and just have an invitation amen <laughs> good gracious life all right Isaiah chapter number seven Verse 14 is our text verse of Scripture. Notice what the Bible says here. Therefore, boy, I always like to read those therefores, amen? Because you always have to stop and contemplate or research what it's there for, amen? Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. And call his name Emmanuel. Some 700 years or more before Jesus was ever born, God let Isaiah see what was going to happen. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful scripture and as I've said in messages, a preacher man that don't preach Jesus needs to get out of the business because Lord, you're what all this is all about. Use what we say today for your glory. May we see a, a more beautiful picture of Jesus through your word. I yield this vessel to you and ask you to use it now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come, Emmanuel. Come, Emmanuel. By way of introduction, a hymn writer a number of years ago wrote a great hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And this particular hymn writer captured the mood of Israel as a nation who longed, who, who struggled, and who really sought God for the appearance of the promise. Messiah. Now the prophecies about the Messiah have been argued so much through the centuries that their true teaching, many of them, they've been lost. Now during this particular time, Israel, they've not heard a word from God in over 400 years. In fact, they say that, uh, scholars say that there were 400 years of silence 
between the Old and the New Testament of Scripture. Can you imagine not hearing from God for 400 years? My goodness! I can't imagine not hearing from God one day. But yet there are many living today that never hear a word from God. And many do not hear a word from God because they refuse to pick up a Bible. And we're living in a technological age. Now, I, I like to hold my Bible. Amen. I like to hold a Bible. A lot of folks like to hold a phone. I don't have a problem with that. I've got two different Bible applications downloaded on my phone. They very seldom get opened. But every now and then I'll open them for something. But I like the old fashioned way. I like to hold my Bible. I remember when the technological age started. I said I'd never own a computer. And then I married my wife. And uh, she sent me back to Bible college. And the only way that I could go was to go by way of computer. I didn't even know how to turn one on. Amen. But I had to learn. And I'm a self-taught computer guy now. And now she calls me to help her with her computer. So, you know, we live in a technological age. You can hear a word from God by opening an application on your phone or your tablet. And I'm not going to get into the story that I've already told you about. I was going to be a technological preacher one time, but I'm not. I, I, I'm going to just stay old-fashioned, okay? Amen. Now, prophets had been silent for some 400 years. Israel was poor, and at this particular time, they were under the ironclad hand of Roman rule. It was a time for hanging on uh, hope. The silence of God would finally, finally be broken. Little did Israel know, but 400 years of silence was about to be broken by the cry of a tiny infant baby boy. Prophetic passages about the Messiah had revealed the place and the person and the purpose in terms of which would allow the simplest to, to understand God's intentions for mankind. God would step into time, not majestically on some large cloud with a large army, but He could have. But He didn't. He could have, but He didn't. He, he didn't come majestically. He didn't come with an army of angels. But God would gain interest, or interest rather, uh, in, 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 He would get here, all right? <laughs> that word didn't want to come out. <laughs> the God that we serve would get here in the humblest of ways. He would be born of a woman. Isaiah gave the first of three signs regarding the promised Messiah in Isaiah chapter 7, verse number 14. Now, if you turn your Bibles to John chapter 2, and you don't have to, but if you want to turn your Bibles to John chapter 2, verses 18 through 22, you would find that this same God is a God of resurrection. The Jews answered and said unto him, What sign? Why is it we always want a sign? We always, for some reason, has got to have a sign. And this didn't just start with us. Y'all remember when Gideon prayed for the fleece to be wet and everything else to be dry? And that wasn't sign enough, so he prayed that everything else would be wet and the fleece be dry. I mean, vice versa. So, why is it we've always tried to seek a sign? 
What sign showeth thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? And Jesus answered, and he said unto them, Destroy this temple in three days, and I will raise it up. He wasn't talking about the temple that they thought he was talking about. He was talking about his body. The Jews said, look, it took 46 years to build this building. And you're going to break it down and raise it back up in three days? But the Bible said that he spake of the temple of his body. Boy, I'm glad we serve a resurrected Savior. Amen. This time of year, we preach about that little baby that, that, that came into the world. And we really stress the birth of Jesus. But friend, we serve a Jesus who was so wise at 12 years old that he taught the religious leaders things that they didn't know. And then they put him on a cross at 33 years old. Hung him there, suspended between heaven and earth. And he died and shed his blood so that you could be saved by the grace of God. Amen. But he didn't stay dead. In fact, if uh, you look at John 8, 22, it says, When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said unto them, and they believed the Scripture and the Word which Jesus said. He may have been a baby, but he's a resurrected Lord now. The Bible says that he's sitting at the right hand of God making intercession for us. Now, let's look at the place of His coming. Whenever we think about the place of His coming, the first thing that I want you to notice, the place of His coming, Mary, a virgin girl from Nazareth, the Galilee area, would conceive miraculously. Now, it was a miracle. The Holy Spirit of God came upon her and God spoke that little baby into existence in that woman's womb. And this was prophesied that uh, he would be born in Bethlehem in Micah chapter 5, verse 2. If you want to jot that down and look it up for yourselves, you can do that a little bit later. But it talks about how that he would be born there and he would be the great ruler of Israel. So the place of His coming was announced even before He got here. Bethlehem of Ephrata. Uh, though you're little among all of Judah, and though you're little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth uh, unto me that that is to be a ruler in Israel. Jesus. So we see the place of His coming. But then secondly, we see the person who he would be. Scholars have various positions about who the Messiah would be. Now, the Bible scholars of that day, they were looking for a messianic prophet. He's going to be a great prophet. He was a great prophet. He is a great prophet. He is the Son of the living God. And then there were those Bible scholars that said, oh, he's going to be a warrior. He's going to lead an army back to this world one day. Amen. He is a warrior. And then there are those who said that he would be a judge, a king, a teacher of the law. All of these things, Jesus fulfilled the law. Amen. All of these things that they taught and that they preached that he would be, he is. But you see, they weren't looking for a spiritual prophet, a spiritual warrior, a spiritual judge, a spiritual king, a spiritual teacher. They were looking for somebody to come in to relinquish the Roman hold on their lives. All agreed that the Messiah would be sent by God. But nobody ever thought the Messiah would be the Savior for everyone. Israel thought he's just for us. The Messiah would be everything 
except in their eyes God's Son. Somehow the scholars of that day overlooked Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. And how many times do we overlook things in the Scripture? My little wife sent me a text a little bit ago. She had a question. Now it's a miracle I had my phone. I hadn't put it on vibrate or silence at that time. And so I heard it. So I went. I said, I've been summoned to the Sunday school room. Well, I got back there and I messed up and botched that question bad. I mean, they found, they, hey, they found out. They found out just how little this preacher with a doctor degree knows. I mean, I had long forgotten about what the question was about. And I'm not going to get into what the question was about. But she looked at me and she wasn't satisfied with the way I answered it. She said, well, I'll just Google it. I said, well, bless God, go ahead and Google it. And she did. And my face turned red with embarrassment. Because I had answered the question wrongly. Now, I had probably studied the, answer, studied the question and could have given them an answer. I, maybe it was COVID fog. I don't know. That is, was that it? But she did make me feel good when I walked out. She said, honey, you're my Google. <laughs> Amen? Be careful using Google because Google can lead you astray from time to time. You know how I know that? We'll stop right there. They had overlooked the fact that Isaiah 7, 14 said, Behold, a virgin shall conceive. So many times we read and we overlook things in the Scripture. Man, I've been sitting at my desk and God speak to my heart to turn to a certain Scripture from time to time. And I look at that Scripture and I'll say, How have I missed this, Lord, for 40 years? How have I missed this? But then again, that's why this book is a living book. Amen. It is a living book. And it's a book that's very much alive. And, and God will give you just what you need when you need it, if you'll let Him. There's not one problem that you'll ever face in this life that there's not an answer to it right here. But the problem is nobody wants to go to God's Word. The third thing that I want you to see is not only the person who he would be, but I want you to see the purpose of his coming. The purpose of his coming. You know, earthly princes are born with a much to do list. You ever thought about that? A much to do list by people rejoicing and acknowledging. A future king. When time came to be uh, the king, people would cheer and bow before their king with great expectations and hope that, that runs high in the new kingdom. Sadly, listen, sadly, but a fact, no earthly King has ever been able to fulfill everything that's been expected of him. Now let's bring that home to the United States of America. No earthly president Amen. has ever been able to accomplish everything that's been expected. Of him. Who would want that job? Think about that. Now I had somebody to ask me this morning about my attire. I had one fellow even tell me I looked like Johnny Cash. 
the man dressed in black. And I told one fellow, I'm mourning today. When the ball game was over last night, my wife said, you will not wear red and black tomorrow. I just want you to know that uh, I do not serve a pigskin filled with air. Amen. As much as I enjoy football because both of my boys played, I worship a God who is much bigger than a ball game. Amen. Amen. That's right. But I got to thinking this morning when I got up, before that ball game yesterday, everybody loved Kirby Smart. But you know what? Everybody don't love him today for some reason. And I feel sorry for that little quarterback. Because I read a lot of stuff that was said about him. And the Holy Ghost of God spoke to my heart and said, Son, you ought not to be surprised. He said, you've been preaching for 40 years. He said, how many times have you been dismissed? How many times have people loved you one day and didn't the next? And you've got to remember, son, it's what God said to me now. I didn't have but 12 followers and said, but didn't one of them stand with me at the cross. Whew. You ever thought about that? Y'all remember who stood with Jesus at the cross? That's right, John. Behold thy mother. You know what Jesus said? The only one. The only one. Israel had waited for hundreds of years for one promised by God who would be able to do what no other could do. And friend, He did come. God never intended for the promised one's appearance to be missed or hidden. Now we don't have time to go back to Isaiah chapter or on over to Isaiah chapter 9 and look at verses 6 and 7. But I mean it's there. Prophesied that He would come. In clear, precise prophecies, God told Israel what to expect. But today, listen, even today, Israel is still looking. Did you hear what I said? They're still looking for the Messiah to come. Israel was looking to and listening to the wrong people for their religious leaders were blind and selfish. God came to the simple and the humble and the lowly shepherds. In Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. You read that. We're not going to go over there either. But friends, listen. He's here. He's here. Jesus is here. He's here among us now by the power of the Holy Spirit. He's here. But people can't see that. All we see is all of this negative stuff that's going on and we're so focused on the disease and and now they're saying that there is a, a new uh, variant of this disease that's coming in. And it's supposed to be the worst of all. And if you look at history, the Spanish flu, if I remember right, lasted four years before they really got everything under control. We're just into our second year. Could it be that we've got two more years to deal with this? 
Or could it be that our way of living now is going to be wearing a mask on our faces? Could it be? And listen, I'm not critical and criticizing anybody who wears one. I had a fellow to tell me the other day to put mine back on and I look better with it on. I said, well, I am what I am by the grace of God. Amen. But could it be that that's the way we're going to have to live our days now? Now listen to me. It's so easy to get so wrapped up in fear that we allow fear to control our lives. You see, too many of us look at the physical body. And don't misunderstand what I'm about to say because God wants us to take care of the physical body because it's where He has taken up His abode. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost that dwells within you if you're saved by the grace of God. So God expects us to take care of these bodies. Some people criticize folk for going and getting vaccinated. I've been vaccinated all my life. When I come into the world, my mama and daddy took me to get my vaccinations. I was required to have them to go to school. And then I joined the military. And they sent me down a line with two different sides of doctors shooting me in both arms with those old air pistols that they used to give them shots with. I got shot in both arms. I don't even know what they were giving me. All I was told that I, I had to be vaccinated. My granddaddy used to raise hunting dogs. And those old hunting dogs would get distemper. Anybody ever heard of that before? And he'd take them to the vet, and the vet would vaccinate them for distemper. I got the coughing one day, and he looked at me and said, Boy, I believe you got distemper. <laughs> but he took me to a doctor, and they gave me a vaccination to try to get over the cough. So whenever they come out with the COVID vaccine, I was sure if over in Barron County called me and says, you want to get the vaccination? Back then, there wasn't everybody that could get it. And I said, you going to take it? He said, I sure am. I said, well, bless God, if you take it, I'll take it. So me and him and my wife and several others from the sheriff's office went and got the vaccination. That's the second one. first one didn't bother me. Second one bothered me a little bit. But this past Monday, we went and got our booster. And my wife looked at that sweet little nurse that gave me that shot. And she said, did you give him the man shot? I thought she loved me. <laughs> Tuesday, I laid in a chair all day thinking, oh God, I've got COVID again. That's how hard it hit me. But by Wednesday, I was better. So I'm not afraid of vaccination. And we live our life in fear. Why? Because Jesus said this to us. The same Jesus that I've been trying to tell you about that was born in Bethlehem. Jesus said this. He that lives and believeth in me shall never die. Now, I'm not so foolish as to tell you that your physical body won't die because 
Some of us look like we've already been dying. You started in the physical to die one minute after you were born. But when you got saved by the grace of God, you started really living. And there's a lot of people that don't ever get excited about Jesus. And I have them every now and then to tell me when I get to glory land, I'm going to have me a spell. I'm going to shout all over glory land. I'm not going to wait till I get there. Bless God. I'm going to shout right now. Amen. Right. Because He lives in me. Yes, he does. And because He lives in me, I shall live too. And if he chooses to leave me here to enjoy you, to God be the glory because I'm here with you, but he's here with me while I'm here with you. But if he chooses not to leave me here, I'm going to go right into his presence. And I'm going to be right there with Him. So whether I live here or whether I live there, I'm going to be with the Lord. And so why do we fear as we bring this thing to a conclusion? The King of Israel had been temporarily set aside or the a uh, kingdom of Israel as a, a kingdom, a nation, has been temporarily set aside. Now God still loves them, and He still gives them the opportunity to have that salvation experience like we all do. But now, man's sin prevails. But one day... One day, sin's going to be done away with. What's that old song we sang, Steve? What a day that'll be. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Think about what God did for you. He limited Himself to a human body of flesh and bone and died on a cross so that you could live. Mankind will never be able to grasp the mind of God. I've been studying God for 40 years. Actually, more than that. And I still am amazed at God. I am still amazed at God. Jesus was born in order to make it possible for you and me to be a whosoever. Do you know that? Yes, sir. He was born for you and I to be able to be a whosoever. Whosoever will may come and take of the water of life freely. Look at your neighbor and say, Do you know that I'm a whosoever? Do you know that I'm a whosoever? If you're not saved by the grace of God this morning, you can't say that. But bless God, before we walk out of this building, you can be saved and say that. I'm a whosoever. Dennis, you know I'm a whosoever. Barry, you know that? You know I'm a whosoever. Bruce, you know I'm a whosoever. Brother Jake, you know I'm a whosoever. You know I'm a whosoever. Philip, do you know I'm a whosoever? Barry, I hope you know it. John, do you know that I'm a whosoever? Rodney. But the thing is, Steve, you know I'm a whosoever? Marta, do you know I'm a whosoever? If my wife knows that I'm all right, praise God. Because I live with her. Now she could probably tell you some of the bad things. 
Because I haven't got perfected just yet. Some of you looking at me, it's spiritual like you have. <laughs> Jennifer, I'm a whosoever. I'm a whosoever. Miss Virginia. Miss Virginia says she's a whosoever too. Praise God for all who know Him or a whosoever. Because you came to Him, not as a baby, but as a resurrected Savior, and said, God, save me. Let the blood of Christ wash my sins away. To God be the glory. Great things He has done. Who I love preaching Christmas messages. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Stand with me. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. And thank you, Lord, for making us a whosoever. Maybe there's someone here today that needs to be a whosoever. Move by your spirit. Have your way during this time of invitation. In Jesus' name, amen. God speaking to your heart. You come.